Okay, so um, my name is Elliot Young and I'm here to talk about the medicinal futures of honey. So honey is a food we all know and love, but after having proven um, popular in our kitchen cupboards, it may now be making its way into our medicine cabinets. And this is because of honey's ability to kill bacteria. So, why does honey kill bacteria? There are a combination of different factors. So firstly, honey has a high sugar concentration. So this can cause osmosis between the bacterial cells and the honey, dehydrating the bacterial cells, therefore killing the bacteria. Now, honey also contains small traces of a chemical called hydrogen peroxide. And this hydrogen peroxide has an ability to form two hydroxyl radicals. And these hydroxyl radicals are highly reactive because they contain unpaired electrons. Now, these highly reactive hydroxyl radicals can then react with a carbon-hydrogen bond in the fatty acid tails of the phospholipid bilayer in a bacterial cell membrane. And this can initiate a chain reaction called lipid peroxidation. Now, what this lipid peroxidation then does is it changes the structure of the bacterial cell membrane, such that the bacterial cell membrane will no longer function properly, so the bacterial cells will die. Now, research in 2008 at the University of Dresden has suggested that there's a type of honey which has stronger antibacterial effects than other honey. And this is Manuka honey, which comes from the nectar from the Manuka bush in New Zealand. Now, this research has suggested that this higher antibacterial properties could, have been, could be down to a chemical in the honey called methyl glyoxyl. So, Manuka honey is believed to have a slightly higher, slightly, higher, slightly stronger antibacterial effect. So, what I set out to do was to do an experiment comparing different types of honeys to see what was actually, the, if there's a significant difference between these different honeys. So I compared three different honeys, a processed honey, an unprocessed honey, and a Manuka honey. And I compared them against two bacteria, E. coli and B. subtilis, so we've got a gram-positive and a gram-negative bacteria. So what I did was I got lots of agar flakes, inoculated them all with either of the bacteria, then with a cork borer, um, took holes out of the agar plates, and then put a set amount of honey into each hole. So then, these plates could then be incubated at 25 degrees C for 42 hours, and then we could re record and measure the mean diameter of um, the clear zone of um, the, bacterial, the bacterial plates the clear zone formed, because this clear zone is an area of killed bacteria. So that will then, that will then reflect the antibacterial properties of the honey. So the honeys were plated at four different concentrations, and the control of distilled water was also plated. So um, each honey's concentration against each, bac against each bacteria was, um, there were six different repeats done at each concentration. So this gave us enough data for a solid statistical analysis. So plotting the, for each of our um, honeys um, of their diameter of their clear zone, so the antibacterial properties, again, the concentration of each honey, all of them showed positive correlations. And a statistical analysis on this of the Pearson's correlation coefficient all gave our values over 0.8, um, confirming these positive correlations, reflecting that all of these honeys then have antibacterial properties. Now then, if we plot bar graphs at 100% concentration for each of the honeys, we can see that the Manuka honey has over, two, over twice the antibacterial effect than the other two honeys. And plotting plus or minus two times the standard error of each of these, we can see that the Manuka honey has a highly significant antibacterial properties compared to the other two, with, with not as big or as, with not too big of a significance between the processed and the unprocessed honey. So, processed and unprocessed honey, there isn't too significant of a difference, but Manuka honey seems to have over twice the antibacterial effect. So, how does this apply to the real world? Because that's what science is about. So, um, honey and manuka honey can be used for, in the, in the medicine area of science, um, for many different uses. So, firstly, honey can be taken for, um, honey can be taken and eaten, so such that it can line the pharynx, such that um, this could help combat bacterial throat infections, as the honey will kill the bacteria on the throat. Um, honey can also be used to cure um, stomach ulcers, for instance, because stomach ulcers are caused by the bacteria H. pylori. Um, it can also, honey can also be used to potentially prevent food poisoning. 
because food poisoning can be caused by different bacteria, E. coli, Campylobacter, Salmonella. Um, manuka honey at the moment is also being used on wound patches. So the manuka honey is being spread on spread onto wound patches and then being placed on um, wounds. So this can prevent bacterial infection via the open wound. So this is honey. So honey might be making its way into our medicine cabinets. It's more than it says on the jar. Mm -hmm.